First of all, uh, it's important to note that women in the first instance were not adversely affected insofar as the jobs that were cut were permanent jobs, jobs that had a certain degree of stability. So because women tend to be employed in part time, often flexible and short term contract, those were seen as more disposable kind of jobs and therefore were maintained in the early day of austerity. Austerity has led to cuts in public services, particularly childcare and social care. And we know those are activating policies that enable women to participate in the labor market. Additionally, the cuts also uh, affected the public sector workers. Uh, and again, we know that women make up a larger proportion of the public sector, particularly at the lower levels of the public sector itself, which were the grades that were worst affected. We know that issues that tend to activate women relate to what is often defined as social politics, so education, health, uh, health care. Those issues represented a, a fraction of the coverage by both of the two uh, official campaigns. What we didn't see during the campaign is discussion of issues to do with citizens' rights and the impact that Brexit would have on citizens' rights, the impact of the, um, of the vote on women's rights is potentially really high um, for a number of reasons. What we have found in our research is that uh, the footprint of EU law in the UK is very significant. That is possibly to do with the common law system, is possibly to do with the neoliberal welfare regime model of the UK, but also to do with the gender regime. So those kind of issues have not been really researched apart from a few research projects. Brexit has been male-led in many ways. So if we look at the EU referendum campaigns, uh, the vast majority of coverage, uh, both tabloids, printed press, um, um, online media, but also normal TV media, um, focused on men. So male voices were much louder, were much more present, and they had a greater impact in setting the discourse. Women were not just absent as political leaders and politicians, but also as experts. So women have largely been absent from the story of Brexit. And if you look at popular culture representation of the Brexit process, so for instance, there have been a couple of really interesting um, fictionalization of Brexit and the campaigns, but also docudramas. The one thing that's really striking is that women are almost altogether absent. I'm um, Professor Roberta Garina and I've held the Germany Chair in Gendering EU Studies um, between two, 2017 and 2019. Uh, the Germany Chair provided an opportunity to develop a network of scholars uh, working on gender politics, society, economics and public policies, law as well, um, and the EU. So really to define uh, a space for this debate within our discipline.